Hi there everybody, thanks for checking out this video and we are going to be talking about Media Encoder today, Adobe Media Encoder CC 2017 and what we're going to specifically be looking at is ingest and encoding presets and what they can do for you and we're going to go about setting one up and once we've set one up we are going to then use it in another video to actually speed up our workflow, our efficiency in editing in Premiere Pro and also being able to handle large files and uh, heavy editing codecs, um, that native editing codecs that is. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Media Encoder CC has opened on my machine and what we're going to do is first of all ignoring everything else in all these windows, coming down to the preset browser. If you click on the little plus icon here, you will see create encoding preset, create ingest preset. So we start at the top and create an encoding preset. So fire that up, we will get a window that looks something like this. And this window is fairly familiar for those of you who've done any encoding or transcoding or rendering using Premiere Pro using Adobe Media Encoder because it's all done within Media Encoder. So it'll be very, very familiar to you. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to create a new preset. Now this preset, this ingest preset, we're going to be, sorry, this encoding preset, we're going to be using as the base for telling Adobe Premiere Pro what we want our proxy or optimized media to look like or to, to be. So why you would use this? Well, you'd use this because you have a high resolution file, video file, uh, 4K or above potentially on a system that maybe doesn't have the power to manage it natively. Or, as I said, if it's a native codec that maybe isn't very edit friendly, again, using um, what essentially Adobe call their proxy workflow or what DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut 10 call uh, optimizing your media, this is essentially what you need to do to enjoy a fast and efficient editing process where you can fluidly edit your clips and work with high resolution media, but then be able to go back to the original source material in order to output the very, very best quality. So what we have to do first, as I say, we're gonna to need to create an encoding preset, okay? So the encoding preset is essentially gonna be made up here and we're gonna give it a name. So you just give it a name, I'm just gonna call mine um, actually, what I will do, rather than give it, call it test preset, I'm going to actually name it what I want to call the preset. So in this instance, it's going to be optimized Pro Res, and I'm on a Mac, so Pro Res is a really, really good editing codec for a Mac. If you're on a PC, DNX HD is also a really good choice. So it's going to be optimized Pro Res 422, and that's a very nice light form of, of Pro Res, and it's very good for the system to handle. Uh, this is going to be a 720p version, uh, so we're going to have a 1280 by 720p version of this uh, of this footage. That's what's going to happen to it. It's going to get turned into that, and it's 25 frames per second and that's the source footage is 25 frames per second. So that's going to be that, and I'm going to call it encode 1.0. Um, actually, encode 1 underscore 0. There we go. So this is basically something actually that um, one of the Adobe guys, Dave Helmley, recommends doing, um, is, is labeling it sort of encode here, and also will label the ingest one ingest, and then 1-0, 1.0, so that you can continue keeping versions of it if you need to. So that's my encoding preset, and that's what we're going to try and set up now. So the format for ProRes is QuickTime. We need to come down to QuickTime, select QuickTime. Automatically, we'll give, try and give you another preset. This option here is based on preset, so you can click that. You won't necessarily see these options here because these are user presets, but you will probably see these ones here. Now, what you probably don't want to do is, is go with any of those. Just ignore those, ignore this, because we're going to completely customize this in a minute anyway. Yes, we want video, and yes, we want audio. So basically, when you have got files that have got audio, it, it will create, obviously, the audio and the video sort of side of things, whereas when you're just looking at a clip without audio, you'll get an audio track created, but there won't be anything on it. So I tend to just tick both, and that covers you for making sure you don't end up losing any uh, audio accidentally. Come onto the video tab initially. The first and most important one is a video codec. We're gonna change that from 
DV25 NTSC and we're going to change that to ProRes 422. There are other flavors of ProRes which you can certainly use. The high quality one is very good as is the light version, especially again if you're on a system that's a little bit under underperforming, underpowered, that's a great format to work with. And then equally if you've got you know a, a machine that's very good and very well power, powered, you can go to a 4444 um, ProRes version and that will give you a lot of latitude. So it's, again, certainly if you're working with high bitrate quality footage, that would be a, an advantage to maybe to use that codec but because we're using a mixture of codecs a mixture of native codecs um, mixture of cameras that are 8 bit 420 we're, we're going to stick with this same straight straightforward ProRes 422 and that's going to be a compensation on file size as well uh, as a little bit of quality but it is very negligible the quality side of things and again remember mind this is just for editing purposes so this is just going to help you with the editing okay so again 422 is absolutely fine. You can't unfortunately use this match source option at the moment. I mean, you can use it, but on our tests, when we've used the match source option and you take it into Premiere Pro, unfortunately, it doesn't recognize that match source option if you start throwing multiple sources at it and so forth. I did bring this up with Adobe and they said, yeah, it's something, you know, that uh, this is their very first go at the ingest and encoding preset proxy workflow style of things so that that will i'm sure be improved over time but currently it's not working so currently the thing you have to do is set all of this up by standard and and just say it's going to be a set format each time what i'm going to do before i do that is i'm going to come down and just make sure everything else here is okay so bitrate settings just leave all of that unchecked that's all fine no problem and the aspect ratio right so what we're going to do we're going to aspect ratio square pixels and we're actually going to work the sort of bottom up here. So square pixels, progressive, if your footage is progressive, most cameras, DSLRs are progressive nowadays, so I tend to leave it to progressive. Frame rate, 25 frames per second. And then what we want to do is create a new width and height here. And you're going to go 1280. And obviously that's not quite right, so we just uncheck the maintaining of the aspect ratio option here and we're going to change that to 720. So that's 1280, 720, which should be an exact scale down from UHD, which is the um, obviously the ultra 4K sort of high high footage, high quality footage, or HD, 1280, 720, again, is half of that again. So we're moving down from there, and we'll make sure we go back to square pixels. There we are. Render at maximum depth, I'd leave unchecked. Um, really, if you're using high bit, re bit rate, bit depth, um, footage something that's you know anything 10 bit and above I would probably think about ticking that but because most of the footage we're using is at least 8 bit I would leave it like that and then use maximum render quality I, I like to take that option uh, especially because it's we, we are potentially going to be doing some scaling we're going to be taking 4k HD footage and we're going to be scaling it um, in part as part of this proxy workflow as part of this encoding preset so I would tick that just to make sure we reserve the maximum render quality when scaling so that's basically the setup in terms of video. Audio is the only sort of other thing you might want to look at, but I tend to leave this completely uncompressed, just leave it normal, don't do anything to it particularly. Captions leave as they are, publish leave as it is. Now the effects I will do something with, and it's quite interesting as to, as to why and what you would do, but the image overlay is a really useful feature to have actually included within this encoding preset. So what you're gonna do is you're basically gonna choose a PNG file and, uh, You'll, if I, you let me, I'll show you what I have on my computer here already set up. So if I go back to my main edit drive, go to my media and crop lines, I actually have one that I downloaded that Adobe have here, the Adobe Proxy logo. I'll put that in the description for you to check out. But essentially, it's just a 200 by 200 PNG image, and this is a grayscale one. I actually created one as well for my own company, but I've created it all bright white, so you can't see it. There we go. Um, and the idea being it's very similar, but it, it's designed to show me that this is going to be a proxy so when if I apply that one so when we use this encoding preset on our footage this image overlay is going to be burnt onto that footage onto that proxy image and it's very handy to help 
initially differentiate whether we're using proxies or not. You don't have to do this, it's just something that you can do, it's quite helpful and quite powerful. Actually it could be also something just to help watermark your footage if you were going to send off proxies for someone to, to look at but potentially you didn't want them to go using elsewhere. Um, you wanted to make it quite clear to them maybe it was low resolution format just for viewing purposes, previewing purposes. Uh, I tend to use the bottom right to put it down there. Uh, I don't tend to offset and I just leave size, opacity all as it is. Absolute sizing, as you hover over there you can see that will scale the overlay media based on its native size and the overlay will appear smaller in higher output resolutions and larger at lower output resolutions. As I say, I just tend to do that, leave it like it is and then go from there. So we have therefore set up our encoding preset. We've given it a name, everything's very good, we can click OK. Fantastic. So as you can see, it's been added to the list of different ones we've got there. I've obviously created a few more already. And so that one's now created as an encoding preset. So the next thing that we need to do is jump onto the ingest preset side of things. Now, to do that, again, up to the little plus, ingest preset. And on the ingest preset window, you'll get something that, again, looks fairly familiar, preset name. So what we're going to actually do in this instance is give it the same name that we actually use for the encode preset. So we're going to go optimized. If I could spell it, it would help. Optimized ProRes 422 720p, 25 frames per second. And instead of it being encode, we're going to write ingest. One underscore zero. So that is now labeled and named, and that's what we're obviously going to be using. Now, in the ingest preset, this is basically going to tell Premiere Pro when I ingest footage and I have my ingest preset set to this preset, please do this with my footage. So, in this instance, you can have a transfer. So, for example, if you were looking to transfer footage from a card, you could actually go to Premiere bring it and bring it in from a card directly and you might want to do that but obviously that's not going to help necessarily so you want to transfer the footage at the same time so in this instance we're going to we're going to bring the files in we're going to copy them from a destination and it's going to ask where the destination might be uh, it might also be um, if you're bringing it from a say another hard drive so you're going to bring it from an external hard drive and then you're going to verify it and do the checks and it's then going to put it in this in this other particular destination for you so you can you can start uh, again making copies of your footage and your in your data don't need to use that in this instance so we're going to leave that aside transcode files to the destination so this is what we're really looking to do here so transcode the files to a destination obviously you can give it a destination so for example if you wanted a spot on your hard drive where all your proxy files were going to work um, I would suggest not making it your internal hard drive which it comes up as default um, I would suggest making it an external drive where you're storing all your media um, there is another way of doing it which I actually prefer so in the instance actually I'm just going to leave this as standard desktop that's fine for the time being Nothing actually happens at this point anyway with that. It's just a, a sort of almost a placeholder location for us. Uh, but the, however, what we do want to change is the format. So at this point, what it's going to do is it's going to see the ingest footage is going to be uh, ingest presets going to be applied to the footage. It's going to see that it wants to transcode the files to this destination using this format. And so obviously the format we want is QuickTime, and the preset is our encoding preset which we just created, optimized ProRes 720p, 25 frames per second encode one. That's it. So that's now set up. So what's going to happen is it's going to take that footage and create it into an optimized ProRes format for us to, to work with. That is that. That's setting up your ingest preset. So we just hit save there. And we've now created our ingest preset as well. So the next thing you have to do is export these so that we can put them into Premiere. So simply select the ones that you want. So you press down command and select to select multiple ones and we're going to go to the option here for export presets and we're then going to find a place to put them. I tend to again put them back in a set, set folder where I know where they're always going to be um, and you can it can be anywhere, it can be on your hard, main sort of standard hard drive, it can be in a cloud or it can be on a external hard drive in which case that's where I'm putting mine currently. So there they go, that's them exported. And that is the end of this initial video in how to create ingest and encoding presets within 
Adobe Media Encoder for use in Premiere Pro. Please do come back and check out the next video, which is where we're going to start applying these encoding presets into our Premiere Pro workflow to enable us to use the new proxy mode that Adobe brought out in a recent version of CC. Thank you very much indeed for watching. If that was helpful, please do give us a thumbs up, like it, share it, and again, do subscribe if you want to be kept up to date with all the new videos from us as and when they're available. Thank you very much indeed again for your time. Take care, enjoy your editing. See you next time. <laughs>